This is the most scariest thing ever. Two wooden planks of wood and a Venino roaster. <laughs> this is the most nerve wracking thing ever. <laughs> fitting a spaceship in. The wing mirrors have got to go in. The wing mirrors have to go in, for sure. View. <laughs> I thought they were just going to drive in. Alright, it's nailed it. What a laugh. This is the truck driver. <laughs> Turned up, that point. turned up to the job thinking that he was probably just picking up a guy. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I'm gonna take this spaceship for a ride. And there we go. Scary. <laughs> and there we go. This the manager of Lamborghini is now happy. And ladies and gentlemen, that is how you load a Venino Rosa onto a truck that is going from Germany back to Italy, back to the museum. I cannot believe the timing. We were just coming here to have a look at it and it got unloaded five minutes after we were here. We had a chat with the, uh, the manager who then decided to show me the LP640, which I'm gonna have to go back and look at now because what an insane car as well, but a Vanina Roaster startup. Heart and mouth moment, heart and mouth situation right there, but. I think that's a video in itself. Thank you for watching. Make sure that you subscribe. I'm heading back to... I need to see this car again. I need to see this car again. And hopefully if you like it, like, comment, share. How would you do it differently? Comment below. Would you drive it back to Italy? I know I would. And I will see you very, very soon. Cheers, guys. The Lamborghini Centenario is the automaker's tribute to the 100th birthday of company founder Ferruccio Lamborghini. Only 20 coupes and 20 roadster versions of the car will be built, and it starts at 1.75 million euros. All that money will buy those lucky 40 people a few tech advancements and a look that is distinctly Lamborghini, where everything has been designed to maximize aerodynamics and downforce and keep heat in check. The Centenario is powered by naturally aspirated V12 with 770 horsepower. Redline has been increased to 8,600 RPM, and Lamborghini says this makes it the most powerful engine the company has ever made. Built with mostly carbon fiber, the car's dry weight is just over 3,300 pounds. Zero to 62 miles an hour can be achieved in 2.8 seconds, and the car's top speed is 217 miles an hour. The new rear wheel steering system will help make the Centenario more agile at lower speeds and give it more stability at higher speeds. There's also an extending rear wing that provides more downforce. The first Centenarios will be delivered this fall, but if you want one, too freaking bad, because all 40 of them have already been sold out. 
This is the Huayra BC, and it's meant to do battle with cars like the LaFerrari. So you know Pagani means serious business with this one. The Huayra BC is named after Pagani's first ever customer, Benny Kaiola. Power output has been squeezed to 789 horsepower and 811 pound-feet of torque from a 6-liter twin-turbo V12 that's built by AMG. That's hooked up to a unique 7-speed gearbox. It's an automated manual transmission that can shift in just 75 milliseconds compared to the standard car's 150 milliseconds. Top speed is estimated to be around 220 miles per hour and the sprint to 60 miles an hour can take around 2.8 seconds. The front and rear subframes have been improved to provide better cooling for the BC, while other changes include new suspension components, four-way adjustable dampers, and Brembo carbon ceramic brakes. A ton of aerodynamic enhancements, of course, are also part of the deal. Overall weight clocks in at under 3,000 pounds, and Pagani looked at every single detail when removing weight from the car. Only 20 of these Pagani Huayra BCs will ever be made. And if you wanted one, too bad, because all of them have already sold out before the car was even unveiled. And even if it wasn't sold out, they cost about 2.35 million euros, so it's not like we'd be able to afford it anyways. The poor man's Z06, it combines most of that car's performance, goodies, and capability, but without the supercharged engine. Instead, it makes do with the standard 6.2 liter V8 with only 460 horsepower that comes mated to either an 8-speed automatic or an exceptionally smooth 7-speed manual. Other toys include the Z06's magnetic ride control system as well as revised stabilizer bars and unique springs, plus an electronic limited slip differential and plus-sized Brembo brakes. On top of all this, you can of course opt for the Z07 package with carbon ceramic brakes and Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2 tires that help it deliver 1.2 Gs of lateral cornering capability. Overall, Chevy says it's a second faster around its test rack than the old ZR1. All this and it looks fantastic too, both inside and out. I mean, just look at that outrageous blue interior. Outside, it's got that Z06 style grille and wider rear fenders. And let's not forget the classic hash marks on the front fenders. Part of the ongoing partnership between Mazda and Fiat, this car takes performance to a new level, or at least it's supposed to, but someone forgot to tell the guys who worked on the engine. Under the hood is a tiny turbocharged 1.4 liter four cylinder engine. It's small, but it does make impressive horsepower at 170 horsepower and 184 foot pounds of torque. The problem is, that's just 10 more than the Fiat version. The good news is, there are rumors the US spec model will get even more. I sure hope so. A bar says it'll do zero to 62 miles an hour in 6.8 seconds. A six-speed manual will be offered, as well as the world's coolest sounding automatic transmission, the Sequenciale Sportivo. More than just a silly paint job, it comes with a sport-tuned exhaust and a standard limited slip differential. If you're an Italian car snob, you'll probably care that each one of these vehicles comes certified by an Abarth technician and comes with a special numbered plaque. You'll probably care less about the price, and that's a good thing because I don't know what it is yet, but I can tell you I bet it'll be one expensive Miata. The coupe's new look is highlighted by a long clamshell hood, new LED headlights, and a new take on that signature Aston Martin grille and taillights. The profile is arguably the coupe's best angle, as the gorgeously sloping roofline and exaggerated rear haunches easily makes this the best looking car in the whole lineup. The DB11 is built on a new aluminum architecture that is lighter and stronger. The Grand Tour is powered by a 5.2 liter twin turbo V12 with stop start and the British automaker claims that this is the most efficient DB in its history. Hooked up to an 8 speed automatic transmission, it has 600 horsepower and 516 pound feet of torque, making the DB11 the most powerful DB ever. It also has a top speed of 200 miles per hour and can sprint to 62 miles an hour in 3.9 seconds. Aston Martin also has plans for a V8 powered DB11 and will likely source that engine from AMG. Three drive modes will be available, GT, Sport and Sport Plus, which will change how responsive the car is. Performance is bolstered by torque vectoring by braking and adjustable damping. Inside, the DB11 gets a 12-inch display and some other technology developed with Daimler, like an 8-inch TFT instrument cluster. The setup will be controlled by a dial and an optional touchpad that understands smartphone gestures. A new self-parking feature and a 360-degree camera is also available. The car arrives in the last quarter of 2016. So this DB11 is the most powerful and the most efficient DB that's ever existed. And I'm going to argue that it's also the most sexy. The 
The GTC and the Lusso parts of the name come from historic Ferrari models, while the four signifies how it has four seats. So the name and increased practicality aren't that sexy, but everything else about the car is still pretty hardcore. Powered by an incredibly rare, naturally aspirated 6.3-liter V12 that revs all the way to 8,000 RPM, the GTC4 Lusso puts out 680 horsepower and 514 pound-feet of torque. 80% of that torque is accessible at a low 1750 RPM. This makes it more powerful than the FF it replaces, but Ferrari also says that it's 30% more efficient. The hatch does the sprint to 62 miles an hour in 3.4 seconds, and top speed is rated at 208 miles an hour. Besides the FF it replaces and the LaFerrari, this is the third Ferrari to use all-wheel drive. The Grand Tourer also uses rear-wheel steering, which makes it more agile at lower speeds while increasing stability and responsiveness at higher speeds. The production version of the Ruggiero concept unveiled last year. It's the latest offering from the Swedish boutique exotic car maker, pairing an 1100 horsepower 5 liter twin turbo V8 with three electric motors. That'll send this Swedish rocket to 100 kilometers an hour or 62 miles per hour in just 2.8 seconds, 124 miles an hour in 6.6 .6 seconds, and 186 miles an hour in 10.9 seconds. And it'll take roughly 20 seconds to reach its top speed of 255 miles an hour. And did I mention it looks just outrageous? Because it does, especially with that active rear spoiler and the brand's trademark doors. Weighing in at 3,505 pounds, it's roughly 900 pounds lighter than a Bugatti. If all of this impresses you and you've got $2 million to spare, the lineup starts right here to be one of the lucky 80 people who might own this fantastic piece of machine. Its predecessor, the Chiron, uses an 8-liter quad-turbocharged W16 engine. Though power has been boosted to an incredible 1,500 horsepower and 1,180 pound-feet of torque. That makes this car the most powerful production car ever, with an output about 300 horsepower over the Veyron. Are you ready for some crazy numbers? This new French supercar can jump from a standstill to 60 miles an hour in under 2.5 seconds and it can make the run to 186 miles per hour in just 13.6 seconds. This engine uses 32 fuel injectors and of course it has extra measures for mass reduction. Thanks to these enhancements, it can inhale more than 60,000 liters of air per minute when running at full speed. That extra power compared to the Veyron comes courtesy of four larger turbochargers and a new two-stage turbo charging setup. Off the line, only two of the turbos engage, while the second two activate at 3,800 RPM. Bugatti says this will eliminate turbo lag and deliver a perfectly linear power curve from 2,000 RPM up. Underpinning the Chiron is a fully carbon fiber monocoque, which Bugatti says is as stiff as an LMP1 race car. In fact, this is the only car in the world where the airbag actually punches through a carbon fiber housing. Top speed for the Chiron is going to be limited at 260 miles per hour, but that's only for road travel. So expect an even faster version to eventually become available, though it may not even be street legal. Bugatti has also said that it wants to go for a new world speed record with this car, which has a speedometer that goes up to 310 miles per hour. It might not quite make it to that mark, but expect it to be very fast. As can be expected from a car this expensive, the interior looks absolutely gorgeous and the leather looks so rich. Bugatti is only going to build 500 units of the Chiron and the brand says that one third of them are already spoken for. The price? Well honestly, if you have to ask, you probably can't afford it, but each one of these cars is going to sell for 2.4 million euros. Porsche revived the 718 nameplate as an homage to the 718 sports car that won numerous races in the late 1950s and early 1960s. Porsche also brought back the designation, so folks won't be confused between this car and all of those new 911 turbos. The standard Boxer uses a new 2-liter flat-four turbo engine that cranks out 300 horsepower and 280 pound-feet of torque. While the Boxster S model comes with a 2.5 liter turbocharged mill, developing 350 horsepower and 309 pound-feet of torque. 
According to the brand, this new engine should help to enhance fuel economy by up to 14%. Both of the engines are paired to a six-speed manual transmission as standard, although the PDK automatic is available as an option. Jumping from zero to 60 miles an hour will take 4.5 seconds in the standard car, while the S model will do it in four seconds flat. To make sure the car can handle that new turbo power, Porsche has also retuned the suspension and added larger brakes. Now the styling on the 718 Boxster looks very similar to the old car, but Porsche says that every single body part except for the luggage compartment, windshield, and the convertible top has been changed. The 911R is powered by the same 4 liter flat 6 engine that lives in the 911 GT3 RS, which means this car gets 500 horsepower and 338 pound-feet of torque. As a result, it can accelerate from 0 to 60 miles an hour in 3.7 seconds and has a top track speed of 200 miles per hour. But the absolute best feature of all on this 911R is that every single one of these cars will come only with a 6-speed manual transmission. On the inside, the 911R comes equipped with full bucket seats with carbon fiber backrests which are wrapped in a houndstooth design, paying homage to the original 911 from the 60s. It also gets a unique GT Sport steering wheel. Like the GT3 RS, this car also features standard rear axle steering, which Porsche says has been tuned to offer direct turn-in response and precise handling. To make sure it can stop, the R is fit with 16.1 inch front brake rotors and 15.4 inch rear brake rotors inside of 20 inch wheels. So sure, there's no large rear wing pushing it into the ground, but the R model does benefit from weight savings. But 100 pounds has been stripped from this car compared to the GT3 RS, and the R model tips the scales at 3,021 pounds. To save that weight, the front luggage compartment lid and front fenders are made from carbon fiber, while the roof is made of magnesium, which also helps to lower the vehicle's center of gravity. The back seats, interior insulation, air conditioning, and audio system have